Hi, my name is Lisa Langell of Langell Photography and I want to show you today how to put a frame around your image and do a few different variations of it so that you can create something that works well for both your image and your taste. This is one of the most common questions that I get asked about my images in addition to how I shot them is how do you put those frames around them? Well, I'm going to show you today using Photoshop CS5 how to do so. This is a finished product. Let me show you from the beginning of the original image. So if I move over to my original image, I'm in a PSD file at the moment, but you can use a JPEG. It doesn't matter because we're going to be creating layers and so forth. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to go and create a background image duplicate. So I'm going to drag this down here and create a copy of my background image. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image and then image size because I want to shrink this image down to maybe about a four by six or so so that when I post it to the web it's a little bit more of an appropriate size and also people can't blow that up real large typically and have a very nice looking image if it did get stolen. You can also change the resolution though I'm going to leave it for the moment and click OK. This will make that image size much smaller though I can blow it up and have it much more viewable for the purposes of putting a frame on it at this point. Okay, the next step that I want to do is I want to go up here to Image, Canvas Size. So the canvas size is going to actually put my border around this image. Again, there's a variety of different ways you can do this in Photoshop. This is one way that I prefer to do so. So I like to make my canvases something that is complementary to the picture itself. So as opposed to putting a Kelly Green canvas on here or just a basic black one, I like to pick colors that are within the image and find something that I find personally pleasing. So you'll see this canvas extension color down here. I want to click this and it brings up a color palette. You'll notice that if I hover over my image, there's a dropper. The dropper can be chosen anywhere you want. Just put it to a color that you like, and that will become one of the parts of the image in your canvas. So you can either pick something that is from your background or pick something that will be a nice complement because keep in mind, it's going to follow the edge of your picture. So if I just picked this simple gray color, it might not stand out much. So maybe I want to pick something a little bit darker, like this darker brown color. Okay, so I click OK, and then the next thing I do is choose the height and the width. And I always make sure that this relative checkbox is selected because it'll be relative to the size of your image. All right, so for height on an image that's about 4 by 6, I probably only want to do about 0.3 of an inch. So I type in 0.3 and 0.3, click OK, and now you can see this background here, or this canvas extension, in that brown color. If you don't like it, you can click Edit and Undo Canvas Size or Step Backwards and you'll be able to redo it with a different color. Alright, now that I've done that, I want to choose something that would look like you would have in a bevel of a mat. So I'm going to go to Image, I'm going to go to Canvas Size again, and I'm going to choose a complementary color. Maybe I like this uh, lighter white color. Okay, so I choose OK, and this time I just want a thin band, so I might just type in 0.15, and then click OK. If I don't like that, if that's too much, I can undo, and I can do it with a little bit less. So if I go to Image, Canvas Size, I could go to 0.1, and see if I like that better. That's a little bit better. Okay, the next thing I want to do is go to Image, Canvas Size, and we're going to pick the larger mat, the thicker mat uh, at this point. And you can choose the color for that, whatever color you like. I might choose maybe a light tan color, or you could choose this darker red color. Whatever appeals to you, you can play with it all day long. And then maybe I'll choose this to be about a 1.5 inch size mat vertically and horizontally. Click OK. And then if I scroll out a little bit or zoom out, you can see what that looks like. So now I've got a dark mat. I've got a little bit of an area that's normally that bezeled cutout on the mat. And then a lighter color. So once I have that, the next step is to simply go to Image, excuse me, go to Layer, Layer Style, 
and go to bevel and emboss. This is going to have the center part of your image looked a little bit more raised, almost like it's three-dimensional. So I'm going to scoot the size up a little bit, and you'll notice as I do so, watch these edges right here. If I scoot the size up too much, it looks too beveled. Not enough, and you don't see a difference. So you'll just have to play with it on your own image to see what you like. I can soften those edges if I want to a little bit. And then the depth I can also play with, so you can see whether you want a thinner or thicker relief on that. Okay, so now that I have that, then I'm going to go down here to Drop Shadow. I'm going to click on Drop Shadow, and I like to put a little bit of a shadow in the lower left-hand side. You can choose your angle. This will show you where your shadow is going to go. I tend to like about a 45 degree shadow. And this will fall in the lower left corner here. So watch as I choose the distance. You can see that start to grow. Look at those corners. Choose the distance. I can choose the spread. And watch how that grows. And I can also choose the size, which will kind of blur it out or make it real tight. So you can pick one that you like, and you can even change the opacity so it's darker or lighter to your preference. And then when you're finished, click OK. This one I'll give you this relieved look, almost like it's floating over the canvas. And then the next question that I often get asked from folks is, well, how do you actually put a texture over this mat? Otherwise, it doesn't look like a matted texture. Now, there's lots of texture tools and plugins and things like that, but I'm going to show you a little secret that just makes it really easy to do. So if I want to add a texture, my little trick is to grab my selector over here and choose a rectangular marquee. I'm not going to feather it, so leave the feathering at zero. And then I go and actually grab a portion of the image that just has some nice texture. So that looks like roughly a uh, rectangle here. And I'm going to copy that. So I'm hitting Control C on a PC, or I could go to Edit and Copy. And then I'm going to go to File and New, or Control N. This will automatically create a new file for you with the same uh, the same measurements as that piece that you just copied. So click OK. And then I'm going to paste this. I can either use Control P, excuse me, Control V. Or you could go up to Edit and Paste if you prefer to do it that way. So now I have this sample of water, and I'm actually going to turn this into a texture. But to do so, I want to, in this case, change it to a black and white. So I can change it to a black and white. You can even play with the, um, the different pieces of the black and white here as far as your filters go and see if you like or hate different colors and the way they show up on that. It's up to you. I'm just going to kind of leave mine pretty much towards the middle for the moment. And now that it's black and white, I'm going to go to Layer, Flatten, and I'm going to copy that so I can go to Edit. And, uh, excuse me, let me select it all first. Control A selects, or you can go to edit, and you can select from there. But just Control A, and then I'm going to copy it. Control C, or go to edit and copy. All right, that keeps a copy of that on my clipboard. I'm going to go back over to my Grebe. I'm going to do a Control D to deselect this piece. I don't really need any of that selected. And now what I'm going to do is do a control P, excuse me, I keep doing that. I want to do a control V in order to paste that layer in there. If your layer gets pasted below the actual background copy, just move it up here. Now you'll see this image here and it's of that water. Well, it looks pretty uh, opaque here in this case. I don't want that. I can go to edit and transform or control T and I just want to go to scale here. Now, holding my control key, I can actually bring this scale out all the way up to the edge of my canvas and drag it this way while I'm holding that control button. And now I have this image completely over my other image. Double click it to make it uh, transform. And now at this point, I can't see anything else. So I want to go to opacity. And change this maybe down to maybe 20%, 25%. Depends on your texture that you like and how much of that texture you want to see. 
All right, so now that I have that, I want to get rid of some of that texture in the middle because it's overlaying over my whole picture, yet I still want to see it out here. So one of the simplest ways that you can do that is click on this mask tool down here, go to mask, and then keep this selected over here. And right at the edges, drag a rectangle here. We're going to actually mask that out. So once you have that, then you're going to go to your paintbrush and choose either black or white. In this case, I have it selected at 100% black for masking. Click OK. And when I do so, you'll notice that 100% black will mask out anything within that selection. Yet it's preserving the transparent texture. All right, once I'm done with that, I can simply collapse all those layers or leave it the way I want, you know, leave them separated. But if you want to make sure that's fixed, go to Flatten Image. And now you have this here. From here, I can create a new background layer. And then I can go in and click the Text tool and type a title if I want to. And again, I can pick the image color that I want. Maybe I want my title in uh, this dark brown color or to match with this dark brown color. Click OK. And then I can t put uh, my logo, my website, whatever I like on here. And I can move that up or down. I can change the font size. Maybe I don't want it so large. I can even go and change the opacity a little bit. And then I can also add a title down here by selecting the background copy. And then you can choose your title. In this case, I had titled mine Ready, Set, Grebe. And that's a little bit small, so I can change by highlighting it and then going up to 18% or excuse me, 18 point font. Now I have this Ready, Set, Grebe. So there we go. The only other thing is left to do is to add your copyright or any other information or watermark that you want. If you just want a simple watermark, you can put a text box here and then you can type in your name or any copyright or whatever you like here. If you want some other type of copyright information or a watermark, of course, just add another text layer or however you like to add your watermarks and you're welcome to do so at your leisure. All right, once you're done, I just simply go File, Save As, and then I can title this as, you know, whatever your file name is, Grebe Watermark, and I can save that. I can then uh, save it as a JPEG or a TIFF or whatever your preference is. Remember, JPEGs can be lossy over time, so now I'm calling this Grebe Watermark. And then I can still change the file size up or down depending on the preference that you want with the quality. Click OK. And now it's ready for posting. I hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful day.